Okay, welcome to the latest Democracy 4 uh, developer blog. I'm Cliff, I'm the, the coder and uh, designer on the game. And I'm gonna talk about what I've been doing in the last few weeks. We do these videos every few weeks, every three weeks at the moment, um, to talk about the game. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of kind of like little things that have changed. Um, and we'll also talk about what's gonna, what's gonna come next. Um, if you've already got the game, don't forget to vote up here um, at the top right on um, like the priorities of what you think is important. So um, if we go to a new game, I've just fixed some stuff here um, yesterday. I'm going to play about with Italy because that's the last country that we added. Um, so I've changed some stuff here because actually I, I read some comments on the Steam forums and they pointed out a few things that were wrong here. So. Um, Sometimes it's quite hard to read the full names of this stuff uh, because there's not enough room. And at least now, if you toggle this off, like they go wider and <laughs> you can read the whole thing. Also, if you have three parties and you, you toggle it off, it didn't actually do anything, it didn't work um, for countries that default to having three parties. And I've, I've fixed that for the next update. Um, the other thing is these are in alphabetical order now. They, they used to be in, in, in like this random order of, of where I invented them. Um, and one of the other things is um, you can rename it. Um, so I'm going to have the Dogecoin is dumb party. Uh, and hopefully that works and like nothing goes wrong. Um, so these are a few little fixes that, that, that we've had here. It was always my intention that you could rename the party and I hadn't set it up right uh, and, I, and I just kept missing where people were pointing out um, that that wasn't a thing. So sorry about that, it should have been in there forever. Anyway, you can do it now. Um, hopefully that works. I mean, I've tested it, but things always go wrong the minute I do a video. We'll just check the support. Yes! Actually, um, we have 362,000 people agree that Dogecoin is dumb, so that's good. Um, anyway, so there you go. So that's that, that's a thing. That's a little thing that's fixed. So um, one of the things that happened is we changed corruption a lot. We changed a lot of the inputs to corruption and the outputs from corruption. Um, it's over here. If you can't find something, by the way, just hit F F1. No, not F1. Um, Control F, or you can just click up there. And if you start typing it, um, the game will show you where anything is, like that. Um, I mentioned it when I put it in, but I, I guess a lot of people just hunt around looking for an icon. Um, and yeah, it is difficult, and that's why we've got a search bar. So um, there you go. So a lot of these inputs were tweaked, and the outputs tweaked, um, because some of them didn't particularly make much sense, or they weren't strong enough, or they were too strong. Um, so if you thought that corruption wasn't kind of um, coming to the kind of values you'd expect in the past, uh, if you try the next version of the game, that actually that's in the current version of the game, 1.28. Uh, so corruption's had um, quite a rewrite. Something else that has had a bit of a rewrite, but it's not enough, um, is GDP. So my plan is that GDP never gets up there. It should never be at maximum. Nothing should be at maximum. Um, you should always be fighting to get things like health and education and GDP as high as possible. But um, it should be really hard. Um, and it's not hard enough yet. So some of the things that should push back, some of the negative impacts of a booming economy, which are often inequality, uh, pollution, traffic congestion, stuff like that. Some of them are not set at the right levels yet, and I just need to do a lot of analysis and playtesting and balancing to get that right. But it is better, it's better in the latest version. So some of the things that used to have too much of a, a sort of easy kick to GDP don't anymore. So that's been balanced and improved. Um, driverless cars as a situation, there is a policy. I think only Korea has it set by default, um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, driverless car laws. There were some kind of settings that were wrong with this. Basically, you have to have this now. Once you've legalized driverless cars, then if you get technology and automation and other stuff to a certain level, um, you will get driverless cars as a green situation. It wasn't triggering due to some stupidity, but that's fixed. Um, something else that got rebalanced was state employees. 
so it got rebalanced basically in response to facts <laughs> which is always the best way there they are why couldn't I find them it's always the best way to change the game is to look at facts um, because I don't want to be swayed by people going I think that this affects that I think that doesn't affect this as much okay show me facts I need facts and not from I've got a strong opinion dot com you know from like a, a stats tracking website or or Wikipedia or something um, anyway so what I did is I went through the US and um, where the state employees are from so how many people does the post service employ how many people are employed in US schools how many people are employed in the US health service in fact what I did for that is I did the the NHS um, in the UK and then scaled it back to the US and then um, recalibrated it all so that they all made sense together um, energy was a, a state energy service was a pain because you had to look at like the private energy uh, companies and how many they employed and add them all up and then work out how many households they represented and then do an equation for the total number of households because there aren't stats for all of them and it took ages anyway so um, if you look at the membership of these things now um, it's accurate okay it's a lot more accurate than it was and no surprise schools and the health service if you have this is Italy don't forget um, schools and the health service um, if you have like a like state provision they employ loads of people um, universities employ a surprising number of people and some things um, really do not the military spending thing is I think because it has a default level actually um, we kind of assume a certain level of, uh, of state employee membership I shouldn't do that I should change that so I look at this now I sort of think yeah that's you know that's confusing it, it does actually have the correct effect in terms of employment so like if you put that up that that reduce um, unemployment if you you know if, but if you drop it down it, I've done it in a clunky way and I'm not happy with it um, I must fix that I've got a huge long list of things I need to fix but anyway what I'm getting at is that there were loads of numbers that were wrong for how many people are in the state employees group um, they were kind of guesses and they're a lot more accurate now um, some industries employ a lot of people um, and and some employ a surprisingly small amount of people for the same amount of money anyway um, so that was done yet yeah, the EU if you've been playing like <laughs> the US and then you have a warning saying there is a worrying situation that may trigger the EU um, that was a bug uh, it was a bug for complicated, boring reasons to do with uh, equations and it was fixed. Also, if you were playing Italy, or it might have been France, and you had EU contribution and subsidy at the same time and hyperinflation that wrecked the economy, that is the same bug. Sorry about that, it's fixed. Um, so you don't have one of these. You either have EU membership that is red, that means you're a your, uh, financial contributor, um, or it's green that means you're getting money from the EU and you'll always have the Erasmus thing and you'll always have the EU um, monetary policy which is basically QE a, a kind of soft QE um, let's talk about bureaucracy very exciting bureaucracy is new okay uh, and, and some people were annoyed about this going this is rubbish um, but I don't think it is I think we have to represent bureaucracy and when I say bureaucracy, I'm not necessarily saying the state. This isn't saying um, the big state is bad. Cliff has decreed that a bureaucracy comes from leftist policies. No, it's got nothing to do with it. It's the number of laws and policies. So you can be free market, but have a load of um, laws um, where you're not spending any money and it's just that amount of bureaucracy around legislation is going to have a negative impact on people um, which makes perfect sense I mean you don't you, you don't have to have um, a lot of spending to have bureaucracy now the only country at the moment that it triggers in is Italy and Italy has a slight boost we've tweaked Italy to be more bureaucratic um, because looking at it there isn't really any good explanation as to why Italy has so much bureaucracy and it definitely does 
um, compared to other to other countries. Um, and this stuff is actually statistically tracked. You can look at stuff like the ease of doing business index and stuff like that, um, where people will look at the number of forms you have to fill in, and the size of those forms, the amount of time it would take for you to comply with the legislation required to buy a house or set up a company um, or, or, or various like common things to see how bureaucratic they are and it's compared across countries um, so it's definitely a thing and it is a thing that is not kind of like made up um, it is a problem um, so this is a new thing and some this was the most popular thing on the voting menu was to include bureaucracy as, as something that should be represented in the game. Obviously, it hits productivity and foreign investment um, because if you've got a choice of countries to build your next factory in, are you you know, going to build it in one that's going to cause you a load of administrative hell? Um, it's a slight disincentive. Um, I, 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 I sort of stand by this being a fair thing to be in. Um, you have to have quite, I mean, like we've only just triggered it here and we've got a tweak on it. It's very hard to trigger, okay? Um, and it's not, cat you can see, it's not catastrophic either. Um, but I think it's important that it's in there because it is something that is um, an aspect of modern economies. It's also one of the uh, few things in the game where we have a little explanation box on one side because otherwise what I would have had to have done is add a tiny little input for everything in the game and there'd be a massive list here and everything would have an output to bureaucracy and it'd be silly. So I thought I'd do it that way. Anyway, um, something that I want to mention is key mailer. Um, you're watching this on YouTube because that's what I, I put it up. Um, there's a thing called key mailer which is a service that we use to give out free copies of the game. Um, free Steam keys of the game um, to people who do Let's Plays and stuff like that on YouTube. And I want to pimp it slightly and point out that, that we do do that. Um, we don't send it to everyone, obviously. If you've got like 100 followers or, or 500 followers and your average video view is like 6, no, <laughs> buy the game. Um, but, um, you know... It, Obviously it exists to get kind of like attention on the game on like YouTube and Twitch and stuff like that. Um, marketing an indie game is really hard. It's always been hard. And um, key mailer and giving out keys to influencers is like one of the things that we do um, in order to promote the game. Actually one of the most effective things you can do to help if you really like the game and you, you, you care is... Um, to suggest a game to like YouTubers that you follow or, or, or streamers that you follow or whatever and say oh you should try Democracy 4 um, because it does have an impact you can tell sometimes that like you get a little bump in sales or when you look into it it's like you know some famous YouTuber has, has covered the game I think it's a really good game for, for streams because you can ask the audience like um, you know, should we boost military spending? Should we cut military spending? Should we, uh, you know, should we privatise the state energy company? Everyone's got a view, right? I've got a view on everything in this game. This is not how I would run Italy. <laughs> so uh, I think it's a good game for streaming. I thought I'd mention it anyway. Um, so, like, coming up, what we can be doing um, in the future... We're going to do like um, a display of the country-specific tweaks. So there are there are a, are a few things that are um, specific to Italy. So they have organised crime, and we have a special thing called the mafia to represent the like historic prevalence of organised crime in Italy. Like I said, they're more bureaucratic, and we have that. Um, but if you look at health, I think it's health. Where is health? Where health? There's health. If you look at health. Um, somewhere, 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 somewhere. Is it health? I can't. I can't remember now. Or is it alcohol or something? Um, blah blah blah. Maybe I didn't put it in. So this would be typical that I sort of, sort of. It suddenly occurs to me to show off a thing, and it's not in here. And no, it's obesity. It's in obesity. I think. Um, where's obesity? Oh, they don't have it. Oh, well, that's typical, isn't it? Anyway, they don't have it. Um, because we have like a special input to obesity for Italy and a few other countries, which is like Mediterranean diet. 
um, which is a better diet than you get in my country where we basically just eat chips and pies um, so um, anyway what I'm getting at is that there's a list of things that make Italy Italy and they're all hidden unless you go hunting for them uh, and one of the things that people wanted us to do is to show those things where you choose a country so if you go to uh, you know if you go here for example that, that we should have extra an extra tab of information or something I don't know whether I'll put it on a tab there um, or maybe here um, just to show you all of the stuff um, and it's gonna be quite technical and quite geeky because um, it's changes to equations and stuff like that like the US has a different attitude to guns different relationship with guns and that's it anyway I'm gonna be doing that um, also something one of the most popular things um, which is this allow continue after term limit expires loads of people are gutted when the game ends and they've won because the term they forgot to extend the term limit <laughs> um, so we're gonna have some sort of dialogue that sort of says I admit I have failed because I didn't extend the term limit and what a dork um, but I would very much like to continue running this country despite what Cliff thinks so click here so I'm gonna add that to like the elect end of the, like the election thing um, I know that immigration is, is hard to fix too hard to fix when you've got booming GDP I'm gonna fix that as well um, and the higher GDP thing like I say it's it, it, it's still not right so I still need to work on that anyway I'm working on all those things and there's loads of little things I do anyway like bug fixes but also balancing so I go through all of the situations and all of the events and the dilemmas and look at the ones that trigger too much and the ones that don't trigger enough and I fix them all anyway that's what I'll be doing in the next um, few weeks but um, all feedback is read so so keep giving me feedback on if you want extra countries or any other ideas for what you'd like to see in the game um, and pester any youtubers you know or if you are a famous youtuber maybe you're PewDiePie or something and you just happen to be watching this thinking I wonder if you give me a copy yes I would um, and you would you would enjoy it anyway um, Thank you for watching. I'll do another video in a few weeks. Please like and subscribe and do all those other social media things. Bye.